Hello, welcome to Keith's Broken Boats. I'm a uh, welcome back aboard Canopus. Canopus is uh, the Avon Navigation Trust crane barge. And uh, the last time I was on Canopus, I was removing the donkey engine that operates the crane. There's the crane all tucked away on the front. And I was on Canopus and removing the, the power pack engine, which sits down in that hole there in the hold. There's, there's, the pump is in there still. I've left that sort of not connected up, but it's just left in there. Now, just to, to recap on what I've done. Oh, just before that, a point of interest there. Canopus. Uh, Canopus's name. Now, that's not something that it was, wasn't named after something the doctor would get out of a nasty boil or somewhere prefers, preserving your cat for eternity. Canopus is actually named after the second brightest star in the night sky. It's only visible in the Southern Hemisphere and is used, probably used as a, a reference point for navigation. So that's how Canopus has got its name. Most things on the, in the trust are named after people that um, had some involvement or massive input into the trust. So they named things after that. Hence the tug being named Eric after somebody that helped. Now that's where the engine bolts. You can see there's two wooden runners there. Uh, it broke free out of those runners. So I'm disposing of those. I've got some nice big rubber engine mounts which I've already bolted to the bottom of the engine. I've just got to work the position out in there to drill it and put it in. I've also removed the electric control box and I'll show you why. Okay, this is the little Lister engine that used to that sits in there, which drives the crane. Um, and what I've added, I've had a few bits to do to this, obviously, change the oil and the oil filter in there put a new fuel filter paper fuel filter in here i've also replumbed all the leak off rail because all that was leaking so all that's done and the wiring loom that runs if you can see around the back of the alternator around the front of the engine there that had actually rubbed against the fan and cut through so I've rewired the engine and I have clamped it down to the back of the timing cover just in there to stop that happening again. Okay, so then, and also, obviously, because it cut through loads of the wires, I've had to rewire it. I've also fitted a new radiator. Now, the radiator that was in it is over here. And what had happened is it had broke free off of all its supports, and with it, rub with it sort of rubbing and everything, it's actually cracked the bottom of it. I don't know if you can see, but there's a crack there and there's a crack all the way around here, which actually meant, there you go, you can see the cracks. There's that one there and that radiates all around here. And what that crack obviously made the radiator leak. So we've got a new radiator for it because of the, radiator and everything shaking around the cowling that went around it was all smashed on the fan so it's had a new fan fitted new radiator new cowl now i've had to do a bit of modification on this i've had to fabricate up these bracing straps to hold the radiator firm one on that side one on that side and this radiator is actually slightly bigger than the one that came off so i've had to fabricate up a new mounting under the front to bolt it down to 
also the top hoses on the old radiator the top hose came in there bottom hose came in down here so i've redone the reposition rerouted the top hose and also rerouted the bottom hose in rerouting the bottom hose the stop cable used to come through here onto the top of the stop linkage there uh, so obviously i can't do that anymore so I've fabricated this little bracket that comes along here. So the stop cable now will come in this hole here into the bottom of that stop linkage and pull it that way. Uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, put a battery on it, get some fuel in it, give it a kick in the guts and see if it works. Now, it is important to bleed diesel engines. And by the term bleeding, that means that you need to get all the air out of all these fuel pipes and out the fuel pipes that go from these are the little injector pumps. You've got one injector pump per cylinder. Some engines have a big injection pump bolted on the side, which is which has got a cam in it, which rotates and the pipes come out of there, but to the injectors, it's all a similar principle. But you need to get all the air out of the injector pumps, out of these pipes, which come up onto the top of the injectors. And that's important because how this diesel engine works is that pump there pushes a shot of diesel at very high pressure up into the injector. And the injector is, and what that high pressure does is that pressure then pushes on the back of the needle in the injector, which forces it to open. It uses fuel pressure to force it to open. Now, obviously, a liquid does not compress. You cannot squeeze a liquid, but air does. So if you've got air in your injection pipe, that pump there will push up and it will just squeeze that bubble of air and it won't open the injector. So you might have loads of fuel at your pumps, but if all your injector lines are full of air, your engine won't run. So first of all, what I've done is I've slacked off the outlet pipe off of the fuel filter housing. There is a little bleed nipple on the top of the fuel filter housing there, but I'm not particularly confident that I might get that to seal because it looks like it's been fudged a little bit. So I will have a look at that, but for the process of just getting some fuel around it to get it going here on the floor, I'm just gonna pump that lift pump now. I've got a can of diesel here that's my in that's my return and i'm just going to pump that lift pump which is pulling diesel out of this can into this lift pump which is coming around here and filling this filter which is obviously i've replaced this filter so that housing there is empty so i want to make sure that housing is full of fuel so i should keep pumping until that happens you see the fuel coming out so now i know that that housing there is full of diesel. Okay, I should keep on pumping a bit more just to make sure I've got it going around the pumps because the leak off system works here, comes around here. So that'll make sure that all those are full until I get fuel running back down my leak off hose I'm gonna get uh, down my leak off hose there it is and as I pump it I've got diesel now running out that leak off hose back into my fuel tank my temporary fuel tank which means now that I've got diesel all around this part now I'm gonna get a battery I'm gonna hook a battery up to it and I'll just undo each of the injectors, spin it over until I get diesel coming out of all my injector pipes, and then I know I've got fuel. So let's go and try and find a decent battery. Right, got a battery there, hooked up with some decent leads to the starter motor. I've bled the filter. Now, this is why I took the control box off. Because when I rewired it, I took the wires off that side of the plug that go into the 
back of the control box as a reference to which wire does what on this side of the plug going into the engine. So what I'm going to do now is crack off all these injectors, uh, spin it over, make sure I've got fuel at all of those, and then we'll tighten them up and give it a kick in the guts and see if it goes. Right then, I've cracked all these injectors, so they're now all loose. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over and make sure I've got diesel coming out of each one of these injectors. And then I'll lip them up and it should be good to go. There we go. I've got fuel at all the injectors. And now, I'll just give them a nip back up. Spanner. Now I'm just going to give them all a nip back up. Just a good nip, Jacob. That's all they need. Just a good nip. Okay. There we go. A good nip. And then. We'll see if it starts. I've got the milk to the engine checked it around I've got no leaks but what I did notice that it wasn't charging and the rev counter wasn't working so I checked that I got power and everything to the back of the alternator from the battery which I've got and the battery warning light wasn't working so what I've done is I pulled the back of the dashboard apart I would show you but I've had to glue something back together in it so it's a bit delicate at the moment but I pulled the warning light out and I found that the warning light bulb had gone now what this does is, is an alternator is when you turn the ignition on you have a live feed that goes through this warning light down to the alternator and without the engine running that is at earth so that light is on that power that uh, warning light wire also powers the back of the alternator to what they call it excite it but that's the the kick in the guts to make the alternator start charging so obviously with that bulb gone i was getting no power down the warning light wire into the back of the alternator so i pulled the dashboard apart swapped the bulb put a new bulb back in it plugged it all back in and it charges so everything's all good on the engine that can now go back in the boat um, I'm going to call it a day here for this video because I've got a bit of work to do in the boat before I start bolting the engine back down, which I'll show you on another video. Um, I'd just like to thank you for watching this so far. That's really appreciate that. Um, don't forget, give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe, share and do all those things that help people on YouTube get on. Thank you very much. Bye.